hey, since the first day, since the Garden of Eden, it's been our world. There's good and there's evil. You know, we're the good guy, Saddam is the evil guy. But over there, they see it a different way. Like when I go to Japan and wrestle, they hate my guts in Japan. When I come back to the States, they love me. So it's, it's all in where you're wrestling. I know uh, one year I went up to Philadelphia to wrestle, and I thought people were going to like me. Uh, they threw bottles at me and cans and everything. I've never been to that kind of world. Everybody, I'd always been in the South, which is my home, and people always liked me. They grew up with me. They grew up watching me. But it's, it's according to where you wrestle, whether you're good or evil. I found that out. I said, no, forget it. Absolutely not. No way. Because I knew what I'd been through, and you don't want your children to suffer the same injuries, the pain, the bo broken bones that people don't hear about. All the suffering that goes into it, the travel, the way you take your life in your own hands, just like tonight having to drive 90 miles an hour after wrestling in Georgia to get over here to wrestle. And I didn't want them to have any part of it. But when I saw that they were all dead set, they would have nothing else. They'd seen me. They'd seen me win Cadillac tur tournaments at the Omni in Atlanta with $104,000 in the house, packed 17,500 dollars. Uh, 17,500 people saw me win that Cadillac, and my boys were all there. And they were at the Cadillac waiting on me by the time I got there to drive it. So they got caught up in the enthusiasm, and there was no way to talk them out of it. So. By golly, I just trained them and tried to teach them the best I could and so they'll have maybe as few injuries, injuries as possible. Uh, the reason I wear this mask is because in 1982, in Wheeling, West Virginia, I had 200 pounds of weight fall on my face. It took my nose completely off. It crushed every bone in my face. So $37,000 later, I came up with this. I guess I should sue them. But it was lucky I had a face at all, and my nose is now not attached to my cranium here. So I wear this mask. You'll see it's a half mask, but it braces my nose here very well. I wear it for my convenience. I'm not trying to fool anybody. Everybody knows the bullet is Bob Armstrong. In fact, they call me Bullet Bob Armstrong now. That's fine with me. They can call me anything. Just call me when it's time to pay me. It's funny thing. My nose sometimes get hit. If I didn't have this mask, I'd end up over here. I'd just have to push it back. It's not attached. So they did everything in the plastic surgery they could. They wired my jaws together. I had to wear a tracheotomy for three months. I couldn't breathe through my mouth or a lot. But they never could get that nose to adhere back to the cranium. So this is just a piece of meat up there. And they had to go up in there with sticks and make a hole so I could breathe through my nose. So I'm just, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm really, I really am. I, I came that close to death. Just by a simple fate, I'm here. Thank God. It's funny the way that happened. Uh, the Million Dollar Man, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Ted DiBiase. Uh, he came into the gym and I was doing what you call pullovers. I was on the end of the bench mm -hmm. and I was pulling over 200 pounds. Well, he just thought it was his business. He just walked by the other end of the bench and gave it a kick. Now, I don't admit know if he meant to kill me or if he meant to hurt me or what, but the bench flipped straight up. The weights came down, caught my nose, tore my nose off. This nose came from another part of my body that I don't really want to talk about right now. In four letters, L-U-C-K, luck. I've been very lucky. I've been hurt a lot. I've had most of my bones broken in my body at least once. But you know, if you, if you ever get that fever, you can ask most any wrestler that's been around a while, if you ever get that fever and that competitiveness, competitiveness and hear that crowd roaring, it's just it's, it's a contact sport like football. You know, football players sometimes play until somebody just says, you better quit before you get killed. And so that's what they're going to have to tell me. 